Okay, so hello everyone, welcome back. This is a continuation of the last video, which is this video, how to accurately identify engine noise for the 5.6 rattling sound. So the rattling sound is being caused by this silent shaft sprocket. So in order to get to that, I need to remove the timing belt as well as the balancer belt. So before I will even bother to remove the timing belt, I will first make sure that this engine is a top dead center cylinder number one, meaning all the timing marks should be aligned. The camshaft should be aligned here the fuel pump should be aligned there okay and the crankshaft should be aligned here okay this should be aligned here now don't confuse this one okay this is your reference point okay should be aligned here okay so as you can see these timing marks should all be aligned and that will bring us to top dead center cylinder number one and the reason why we want to do that is because if we remove the timing belt without first making sure that they are all aligned and when we install the new one we are going to have to rotate the crankshaft the camshaft the fuel pump one by one in order to align it to the timing mark and in so doing we run the possibility of having the piston bump into the valve because this is an interference engine and we don't want that to happen okay i have already discussed about an interference and non-interference engine in this video so if you're curious you might want to check this one after okay i'll post a link in the description below so i will now put the crankshaft bolt back okay in order to allow me to rotate the engine but first i'll spray some wd-40 just so it will be easier to remove again later okay so i included the washer too okay so now we can rotate the crankshaft but first make sure that the transmission is in neutral okay so 19 mm and we will rotate the crankshaft and align those timing marks we're almost there okay okay now so as you can see we're aligned here aligned here and we're aligned here okay now we need to loosen these two bolts for the tensioner okay 12 mm just loosen it okay here as well and now get yourself a pry bar and push the tensioner out of the way and lock it down just snug just so the tensioner won't spring back and now you can pull the timing belt out of the way you see very easy okay so the next that we'll have to remove is the silent shaft belt okay so in order for us to do that we need to loosen this nut okay I'm sorry and then one here okay okay so now in order for us to remove the silent shaft belt off grab your pry bar again and apply tension here pull the belt out see very easy okay okay so the next thing that i have to remove is the silent shaft bracket and which is tricky because i can't use this y tool because as you can see it's already loose so what i think i'm gonna do is apply wd-40 on that nut okay and then i will give it five minutes to soak and hopefully an impact wrench will do the trick hopefully It's not coming loose. Uh -huh. Okay, there it go. Let's pull this out. Let me wipe this off and 
let's see if there's damage and there he is that's bad news so as you can see this is for the front upper silent shaft okay and here the notch like this it's no longer visible even if I put that there it would still grab a hold of the silent shaft but there's that considerable play and if I will just replace this and install it just like that that will just leave me with the same problem down the road see okay so just to show you okay this is the upper silent shaft bracket and this is the lower silent shaft bracket you see clearly the notch here is already completely worn out actually even the bore has already become considerably wider even the timing mark that is on the lower front case has broken off because it should look something like this and if we look closely a considerable portion of the lower front case that holds the silent shaft has been eaten away to the extent that a crack is already visible and i do believe that's where oil is also leaking out that's why the lower front case is somewhat oily so i'm trying to figure out what could have led to that and there are two possible reasons that i could think of one is out of timing but i highly doubt it because i fixed the timing for this engine myself and i have this habit of double checking even triple checking that everything is in order before putting everything back in place and another reason is if from the onset the balancer was already out of timing that would cause the silent shaft belt to break okay instead of the silent shaft sprocket to wear out and also either way mind you ever since this engine was rebuilt this engine already ran more than 11,000 kilometers so if there was a problem with the timing of the balancer then this should have failed sooner rather than later and i would have felt that uneven vibration from the beginning instead i just started to feel it when i already noticed the rattling sound which leads me to the second possible cause and i will dare say the more likely reason that led to this which is about two months ago i had some matters to attend to inside an establishment and my girlfriend chose to stay in the parking lot inside the vehicle so i just left the engine on for the ac to keep running and when i came back about an hour and a half later i heard a whizzing sound and my girlfriend not knowing anything about an engine so she does not even know how to drive so when i check the upper radiator hose blew off and this is it and the engine was already in the process of overheating and because of that the oil lamp turned on indicating that there was no longer any oil pressure except when i revved the engine and after a week after that the lower radiator hose also gave out too and this is actually it but fortunately at that time i was there so the engine did not overheat so in the process of replacing the lower radiator hose that is when i noticed the rattling sound but my take is the silent shop sprocket already failed even prior to that about a week ago when the oil pressure dropped because the engine overheated and when engine oil gets too hot it becomes thinner and because there was no oil pressure to lubricate the silent shaft that would cause the silent shaft difficult to turn and in the process the silent shaft sprocket ate away on the notch on the silent shaft so that is the logical explanation that i can think of a combination of overheat and little to no oil pressure at all which leads me to another problem because i already tried looking and i could not find a silent shaft available and even though i want to fix this i can't at the moment because i could not find a replacement and online if there's any available but it is abroad which leads me for the time being with the only option of condemning or just deleting the balancers the engine would still run even without this because the only purpose that this balancer shaft have is to reduce the vibration of the engine because as the piston goes up and down and the connecting rod does sort of a pendulum motion that produces vibration and so what the balancer does is something like this it has a counterweight here on the other one on the opposite side so as this turns because of the uneven weight it will produce vibration and this will turn with the weight on the opposite position of this 
and create vibration of its own. And in so doing, they cancel each other's vibration, including that of the engine. It seems counterintuitive to create more vibration to reduce vibration, but in its basic nature, this is really how it works. And that is why the balancer is supposed to turn more or less twice the speed of the engine. That is why this bracket is bigger and on the silent shaft it is smaller to allow the silent shaft to turn faster than the engine. And it is because of this that it's more common to see a broken silent shaft belt than a timing belt. And also, years before I decided to make videos on YouTube, I already did an experiment running the engine with and without the silent shaft belt. And I would dare say, the difference is not really that considerable. Granted, the engine will, it will vibrate more, but if you are not aware that the silent shaft belt was not installed, if you're not very keen, you would hardly ever notice it. So anyway, that's what I'm going to do. Let me first give this a good clean wash, just like I did in this video, and we'll put everything back again. Well, of course, without the silent shaft, and we'll see. Okay, so it's all clean now. I'll cover the crack with steel epoxy just to prevent the oil from leaking out of there. Now I know in my last video I told you that I would show you how to replace the timing belt as well as the silent shaft belt. Okay, so I'm still I'm going to show you how to do that. But in this video, I'm not going to buy a new one because this belt has still some life in it. But I will show you how to determine when you need to replace your belt. Okay, so first check both sides. You should see a straight edge, okay, on both sides as though it was cut like a knife. Should you see any flaring or unraveling or any defect that indicates wear, okay, you should replace it. And also check for cracks all over, okay, all over the belt. Check here, check here, check each tooth, okay. At any point should you see any crack, regardless if the belt still looks new, or even if the belt is new, should you see a crack, replace it. Because that crack is just a disaster waiting to happen. Because when your timing belt breaks in an interference engine, that could mean your engine will be destroyed too. Like I've explained in this video. One other thing is if you, if you look closely, you see this is the old one. This is already thinner than the current timing belt. See? So all in all, that's how you determine whether your belt needs to replace or not. Now, one other thing, okay, I should remind you that should you intend to use the same belt again, you should install it in the same manner you took it out. Okay? Meaning, if it was installed this way, so you should put it back the same way. That is why if you can mark it before removing it, the better. Now, as for me, my reference point is I always install the belt with the lettering on the belt facing towards the front of the vehicle. Even the fan belts, I install it that way. It's sort of a OCD habit of mine, so I would never get confused. Another tip is, should you buy and replace a new one, it's good practice to bring the old one with you as reference, okay? Because it doesn't mean that it's a 45.6 engine, that they are all the same. Some timing belts, you'll have a 163 feet, and some are only 154. So, good practice to bring a sample with you. And also another thing you should consider is the shape of the tooth, okay? Because it should mate with the sprocket like this. Because there are sprockets with cogs that are shaped like this. And sprockets with cogs that are shaped like that, okay? So the belt that should you buy should mate with the cog on the sprocket so if you install the wrong type of belt that's going to cause your belt to slip and causing your engine to fail okay one other thing to consider now when it comes to installing the belt we should start with the silent shaft belt first okay now this just for illustration purposes i will just put that there and make sure you're aligned here and on this one you see that notch it should be aligned there and this one should be aligned there, you see? That V and this notch. So once we're perfectly aligned, now remember, we've overcome the tension of the tensioner, okay? Slip the balancer belt over the crankshaft belt first, okay? And now slip it 
over both the balancer sprocket okay making sure that it's not gonna move let's do this one first hold that down and then the one underneath once you're done with that slip it over the tensioner and the reason why you would want to slip it over the tensioner last is because if you look closely it is only the tensioner that doesn't have a flange around it and like this one see so once you're done with that make sure that they are still all aligned and release the tension of the tensioner and it's sprung back so we're still aligned here and we are aligned here and we should be aligned here but because this bracket is already worn out as well as the silent shaft that's the best that we can do now anyway when you're done with that don't tighten the tensioner bolts just yet okay so i'm going to remove the silent shaft belt again as well as that sprocket because like i said that was only for illustration purposes i'm going to delete or condemn the silent shaft now let's move on to the timing belt like i've shown earlier this timing mark should be aligned here this as well should be aligned here okay and the crankshaft should be aligned there now unlike the silent shaft belt for the timing belt we are going to slip the belt on the camshaft last because it is only the camshaft sprocket that doesn't have a flange around it unlike this one and this one okay okay so you see just remember the one that doesn't have a flange around it you slip the belt on that last see okay so for the timing belt we slip it over the crankshaft first then pull it up over the tensioner as well as the fuel pump sprocket now apply pressure here okay and then we need to guide the fuel pump back to its timing mark because this tends to move just like that hold that in place pull the other end of the timing belt and drop it over the sprocket of the fuel pump just like that let go of this then wrap this over the tensioner and like I've said slip it over the camshaft sprocket last now start under Neath, okay and then work your way up and that's just it see okay so before we release the tensioner let's make sure that we're still in the proper timing okay and we are so we can now release the tensioner okay just like that now don't tighten it just yet now in order for us to apply the proper tension on the belt and just imagine there's also a silent shaft belt there with this tensioner also loose and this one still also loose okay i will pull this wrench on the crankshaft clockwise and i will apply counter force here okay now just don't overdo it just enough check for tension because we would want only the belt deflection of only four to five mm same for the timing belt b okay or silent shaft belt okay so now i'll apply some more tension check some more check okay now once that is done we can now tighten this down now start here okay these were it allows you to adjust it to start there tighten that down and then underneath now for the tensioner of the timing belt B this is where you adjust it so you start with this one first okay and then the other one 
Now, when it comes to tightening this down, just don't overdo it, okay? In order to avoid loose thread, but if you really want to be technical about it, you can use a torque wrench and apply 19 foot-pounds. So now, I do believe we have a belt tension of 5 mm. So again, one last time, check if everything is still in its proper timing order. And I do believe it is. So that's it. The next thing for me to do is to put everything back in place. Now, just so you know, should you install the crankshaft pulley back, okay, make sure that the keyway groove is aligned with the keyway on the crankshaft, okay? I don't know if you can see that, but there's a keyway here. So install the crankshaft bolt, engage the handbrake, and put the transmission in fifth gear. And tighten the bolt as much as possible, but if you want to be technical about it, you apply 130 foot-pounds of torque on the crankshaft bolt. So 130 foot-pounds, we're already at 100 now. And this is 125 foot-pounds. I don't know if you can see that, hold on. And then add five, that's 130 foot-pounds. Lock the torque range down and then tighten the crankshaft bolt down until the torque wrench makes a clicking sound. Okay. Okay, there. Okay. Okay, so. 130 foot pounds of torque okay so everything is already back in place it's already dark now with the exception of the upper timing belt cover just so i can show you that i did not install the silent shaft belt okay okay so let's start the engine and let's see the vibration okay so as you can see the ripple of water let's place this on top of the engine Okay, before I rest this, I'll give, I'll give this at least 30 seconds to run first, okay, in order for the oil to circulate. Okay, so it's at least 30 seconds now, and let's see. So anyway, that's how the engine runs. The engine still works even without the silent shaft belt. So as you have seen, that's how it runs, that how, that's how it vibrates, so you be the judge. Now, if you ask me, I would have so much preferred to fix the silent shaft, but if there's no part available, then what is there for me to do? So this is the best that I can do as of the moment. So anyway, I do believe this is it for this video. Maybe in time I would be able to find a replacement silent shaft and I would be able to make a video of that too, hopefully. So as for this video, I'm gonna end it here. I hope you find this video helpful, informative, or maybe even enjoyable. If you do, let me know in the comments below. Like, share, subscribe if you want to, and only if you want to. And as always, thank you for watching.